Hello, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly's. I'm looking here at a Range Rover 4.4 Vogue. So inside the vehicle here we have restricted performance and he's getting the DPF symbol as well come up. It's not there at the minute. So you got the engine management light on as well. Okay, so he's come down to me from Croydon or something, I think it was. Uh, I've got the launch Eurotab 3 scan tool here out. Um, now, what he's come, told me is that uh, Garage has told him it needs a DPF clean. Now, it may well need a DPF clean, but it also needs a differential pressure sensor here by the looks of things. So, like I said, yeah, DPF clean is quite possible and the DPF pressure sensor circuit range here hopefully it's just a pressure sensor not a not a wiring issue um, I have changed a few of those with the same issue so hopefully it's the same job now this one here exhaust gas temperature sensor I wasn't expecting that to be there and we are not gonna deal with that right now today because we cannot get hold of that sensor um, it sits right in the middle between you got to remove the manifold um, possibly the oil cooler and a few other fuel related pipes even if we could get that sensor today it's not something I'd want to do here on the side of the road literally because if we take stuff off you know there might be seals or gaskets um, that may not go back together uh, and what we don't want to do is remove all of those seals and gaskets and then we you know we can't put them back together and then we can't get hold of the gaskets for a few days so I'm not going to touch that one I'm going to tell him to get that done at his local garage back at his local garage which they didn't mention that anyway they should have see he's just come to me today to get the DPF sorted out so I'm gonna test the sensor uh, clean the DPF so what we'll do is we'll come back out of here I'll go to the live data uh, we'll look at the differential pressure sensor Sorry, we're getting a bit of glare on the screen there. Try and hold it up a bit. Uh, what's going on? I think because we've cycled the ignition on and off, it might have messed up the uh, live data. Need to go back and restart that. Okay, here we're back. We have differential pressure minus 820. And if we accelerate the vehicle, it doesn't move up and down. So we're not getting any reading from the pressure sensor there. We've got voltage at the sensor, according to live data. So we are going to have to go under the vehicle and have a look at the uh, have a look at the pressure sensor. Now I do have one in the van. I do carry one. Um, so we will uh, we will have a look at changing that if possible. Now I wasn't even planning on changing that sensor because I was told it just needs a DPF clean. But it's clearly got a circuit issue with the either wiring plug or the sensor there. This is a problem that I see way too often. What people do is they call me and say, yeah, I need a DPF clean. Yep. Okay, what's wrong with your DPF, mate? Oh, yeah, the guard said it's a DPF problem. It just needs a DPF cleaner. Um, no further information, you know, no, no proper information. Okay, what I always ask people, okay, your DPS blocked, do you know how blocked it is? What's the, what's the miller bars of pressure on it? No idea. Um, just told that the DPS blocked. So people just read the code. Okay, yeah, you got a DPF problem. DPS blocked. See you later. But you need to read exactly what it's saying. Like differential pressure is too high. But this one here, differential pressure circuit range performance, is possibly needs a new sensor. Uh, and we're clearly not getting any reading from it on the live data. So when you switch this vehicle off, you can see it takes a while for the engine to actually shut down. It's common common for these when they've got a pressure sensor circuit issue. So just under the vehicle here, right up there we have the sensor. And we can get that open with a, I think it was a size 4 hex there. Let's have a look. So that is a HW3, so it's a size 3 hex. We'll get that open off. Okay, that's it, all sensors out. There's a new one in there. Now we could test the wiring to the sensor there with a multimeter, of course, but I can already see in the live data that we have got voltage there. 
I've changed loads of these in the past and I do know that these are a problem. Um, that's the sensor out. The bolt has come out with this, so we're gonna have to mess around with that and get that bolt out. The uh, the whole thing has come out of the case in there. The, or whatever you like to call it. Okay, we are back in the vehicle, back onto the live data here. Now you can see we have a thousand millibar pressure. Now reading on the differential pressure sensor. For some reason or another, these 4.4s, they do read the ambient, uh, sorry, the atmospheric pressure. They do read atmospheric pressure. So once we start the vehicle up, whatever we're sitting at above there would be the reading that we're going to have on the DPF. So let's start it up. We have, okay, we're settled down, 1,080 millibars. So I'd measure that as we have sort of 80, 90 millibars of pressure there on the DPF. So if I connect up a manometer here to the DPF, I can see that we have 200 millibars of pressure there. So just going to disconnect that. Now we've got the manometer disconnected, I'm going to use some of this launch DPF cleaner here. I'll put the link to that in the video description. Uh, so what I've done is we've already mixed up some water in here and we're topping that up. So we're using a 50% mix of the fluid and some water into the bottle here. Okay, now I've got the gun here already connected. That's connected up to the compressor there. And I've got that set at nine bar of pressure. So we're just gonna switch the engine off. Now what I've done is I've connected the DPF gun here directly to that tube. And that, if you follow that tube there, it goes along to the front of the DPF. And you've got the second tube that goes after the DPF there. So now we just have to squeeze the trigger and get that filled up with the fluid here. It goes straight through the tube down into the front end of the DPF and it will expand and fill the whole DPF completely up. Okay now we've run out all of that fluid we're gonna get back inside and we'll start the vehicle up. Come on. We'll just let that idle for a minute. Now what we're gonna do is let this idle just for a minute or two and we're gonna go back under and we're going to spray some more of that fluid back into the exhaust while the engine's running. Okay, so the engine's running, we're just spraying some more of that fluid in there. You can see we're having a little bit of leakage, there's a lot of pressure there. Okay, we're back in the vehicle, we're going to hold the revs up now. Try and get this cleared out. So you can see we've come down to 1050 millibars there. We're going to need to do adaptions on this sensor just to make sure it's reading right as well. So now we'll see some smoke coming from the rear of the vehicle there like that. Of course that smoke will increase when we rev it up. Now we're just putting back on the bolt there for the sensor. Make sure that's all tightened in properly. Okay, DPF pressure has come down to 1,020 millibars there. And the soot there has gone up to 16.989. Sorry, I do apologize my voice. Uh, I've had a blocked nose, some sort of flu for the last 10 days. It seems to be dragging out a bit. Uh, but we'll crack on with the job. Okay, we need to readapt the differential pressure sensor now and hopefully get the soot lower down and we can reset the DPF. So I'm going to turn the ignition off. You can see what this vehicle does, it's still running, look. It takes a while to turn off. That's common on these when they have differential pressure sensor issues. Okay, now we are going to go to special function. Uh, sorry, bear with me because I can't remember where it is. There it is, yeah. Differential pressure sensor replacement. Get that replaced. Okay, so that's the DPF pressure sensor there, learnt in. Switch the ignition off. 
Okay, what it's going to want to do now is it's going to try and clear the codes after it's been adapted. Okay, so that's all done. Now we'll go back. I'm not sure if that already cleared the codes or not there. Uh, let's go in here and see if the codes are still there. Oh, we've got the ignition off. Turn that on. Okay, so we've just got that one code there for the exhaust gas temperature sensor. We're going back to live data. We're going to search for the differential pressure again. Okay, we have now 1010 millibars on the DPF pressure there. So we should now see that decreasing. This one. I should start decreasing. Now if we hold the revs up to say 2500 RPM, somewhere around that area. We have 1140 millibars on the pressure there. We'll just hold it there for a minute. Keep an eye on these numbers. See if these are dropping or rising up. Okay, so we're taking the vehicle on a test drive and we need to keep an eye on the grams of soot there. Make sure that that's coming down, which it is. So we'll continue driving it until that goes below 6 grams. So on these vehicles, to reduce the grams of soot, you can either tell her it's had a new DPF, and these will numbers will go back to zero. But what I like to do on these is just set off a dynamic regen while we're driving. And as long as we can see those numbers reducing, then we know everything is working correctly. If there is a problem, these numbers won't, won't come down. Okay, test drive is finished. We have the soot down to 3.41 grams. So once that's down under six grams, the car is then capable of cleaning itself. And then you'll get this message here. Okay, now that is all done. So we'll press okay. Switch the ignition back to two. Now that other code for the EGR temperature sensor, I did have a little read about it. And it said that sometimes uh, just a blocked, a badly blocked DPF can cause that sensor to give off the wrong readings. So we'll check that again once we're finished here. Okay, so that's complete. Okay, we've got the engine running again. We're going to come back from here. We'll go back into the fault codes. And check what codes we have. We still have the exhaust temperature sensor circuit. We'll try to clear the codes and see what happens. And we'll do it with the ignition off. And then we'll start it back up again. Uh, turn it off first. Okay, start up. So the code does come back, so yeah, it is going to need changing. Um, we don't have any engine management lights or any warnings for it, even after the test drive. So it doesn't seem to affect the regeneration of the DPF from what I can see. Okay, so we're just about done on that now. Okay, so that's it. That should be all finished on the Range Rover. And we'll see you on the next video.